Hey guys, it's Zach from Engadget. I am here with the Nikon One System J1. It's Nikon's new interchangeable lens camera. So the J1 and the V1 were both announced uh, about two weeks ago. And so after the announcement, we were able to take a J1 with us. And, and we've been shooting with it in Asia, uh, currently in Japan, uh, for the last week or two. Um, so I'll give you a quick walkthrough of the camera. As you can see, it's, it's very, very white. So the camera itself is going to be available in five colors. You can get pink, red, white as we have here and silver and black uh, two more traditional colors that, that I would personally opt for so this uh, white model here as you can see is, is white on the sides top and front the lens is also white and we have a white strap it's black on the back though uh, and, and so uh, all the cameras will be two-tone except for the black which will be black on the front and the back uh, it's powered on though so there's a, a small power button here on the top uh, there's a shutter release, a video capture uh, recording button. On the right side of the camera we have two ports. There's a mini USB port and HDMI port. On the bottom we have a battery compartment. So this uses a ENEL20 battery pack and then there is also an SD card slot. So let's pop the battery back in there and power it up. So the camera ships with a, a 10 to 30 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 lens. Um, you can also buy for uh, $250 this 10 millimeter pancake lens that I have on there now. And then there is also a 30 to 110, also f. Uh, this is f3.8 to 5.6. The pancake lens is f2.8, uh, and this 30 to, to 110 lens will retail for $250. So as you can see here on, on both zoom lenses, there's this little button here. You can lock the lens into place so it actually collapses for storage. And then when you have one of these two zoom lenses attached, you can actually power on the camera by pressing the button in here and then extending the lens. Unfortunately, it can't power off the camera by retracting the lens, so that would make sense though. Uh, it's, I'm sure that Nikon could add something like that with a firmware update. Okay, so I'll give you a walkthrough again of the uh, of the camera body itself. Um, now, back onto the back, we have a three-inch LCD here. Oh, let's power it back on, and then we have a function button. This uh, the, all the zooming is done manually on the lenses, so this zoom is for playback only. Then we have a, a mode dial with four modes. So we have the video capture mode here in the bottom. This is an auto capture mode, and then if we turn. So that mode we have smart photo selector and then we have motion snapshot which takes about a second or so of video with each still photo that you have. So these features are probably not going to be attractive to pros but they are pretty unique and, and definitely add some value to the camera for for users that you know find them attractive. So I'm going to take a, a motion snapshot here just by pressing the shutter button. So it's going to show that it's processing and then when we go to play it back, you can hit OK to play the movie, and it's going to play this back as a video with sound, and then it'll show the still photo. So obviously with a stationary object or subject, it's, it's not really you know, going to, to give you the full effect, but when we move the camera while shooting, and when we go to play it back, you'll see that we panned a bit. Not so exciting with this subject, but it, it definitely has some more potential depending on your shooting environment. Okay, and then back over to video mode here. You can actually choose between two different uh, video shooting modes. There's HD. This can actually capture 1080 30p video, or 1080 60i, or 720 60p. Uh, and then there's the slow motion video mode which captures a, a very narrow image but can capture at 400 frames per second. So the easiest way to demo this slow motion video is to drop a coin in, in front of the camera. Um, so let me pull one out of my, my wallet here, I'll power it back on, and then I'm going to get this strap out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to pre-focus on my fingers here because that's where I'm going to drop the coin. And then I'm going to start the video capture and then I'm going to stop it. So then when we go to play it back, after the green light stops flashing, it's playing back. That two second clip became a 35 second clip. 
So we'll just watch it for a moment here. And you should see the coin free falling in, in just a moment. So there you go. Pretty cool. I'm not sure what practical applications we have for, for this high speed shooting mode, but it's still nice to have. Okay, and then the one major issue that we have with this camera, and imagine that most of you will have as well, is the sensor size. So Nikon is using a new, uh, completely designed from the ground up sensor here with a 2.7x multiplication factor, which actually makes this 10 millimeter pancake lens here a 27 millimeter lens. So I'm going to pop off the lens here so you can get a, a good look at the sensor. There we go. And so sort of get a good look at the sensor here. It's in the center of, uh, of the frame right now. And then I have over here a Sony NEX5N just for a size comparison there with the sensor. So the light isn't the best right here but depending on, on how we angle it you might, there we go. Okay. So you can see the sensor there right in the middle. So this is the Nikon 1, Nikon J1 and then this is the Sony NEX5N. So that whole thing in there, that is the sensor. So this is an APS-C size sensor. And the one that we have here is, is much smaller. This is a new sensor with a uh, 2.7x crop factor. And so the one thing that, that a uh, larger sensor will provide is not only higher quality images, but, but better quality at high ISOs. Okay, so I'm not gonna put the lens back on right now, but I will once again show you that sensor. So it does take decent images. They are not uh, comparable to the Sony NEX5N or the NEXC3 or the Olympus EP3, uh, but they're decent. And we haven't had a chance to te test out the Pentax Q yet, but I can imagine that the uh, image quality is going to be pretty similar between this and the Pentax Q, which also has a similar size sensor. So there you have it. It is the Nikon J1. It'll be shipping on October 20th for $650 with this 10 to 30 millimeter zoom lens.